On this episode of Exactly How, you're going to learn what the big hedge funds are doing to hedge themselves against what's happening in the market, how to position yourself to profit as this all plays out, and how to make a lot of money in this crazy market right now on this episode of Exactly How. You're listening to the Exactly How podcast, where you'll hear the underground, closely guarded wealth building secrets of successful people around the globe. Discover exactly how to improve your mental, physical, and financial health. Feel better, make more money, live, give, and prosper in today's exciting, fast paced world filled with opportunity for those who know exactly how. Hello, everyone. This is Ross Hamilton, CEO of ConnectedInvestors.com, and welcome to a very special episode of Exactly How. We've all seen the big shifts that have been happening in the marketplace, and I've been reaching into my Rolodex, reaching into uh, my connections to pull out some of the biggest thinkers out there so you can understand how to properly position yourself in this very exciting market. Uh, on the line right here, we have a gentleman by the name of Corey Donahue. He runs a site called uh, Second Avenue. And they are essentially a Wall Street backed real estate investing company that is, uh, I wouldn't say excited about what's happening in the market right now, but very, up, very uh, they're looking at the glass half full thinking, how can, we, how can we move forward during this time when so many other people are kind of pulling back? And this is when money is made. So uh, Corey, thanks for jumping on the line with us. Yeah, it's great to be here. I have literally been trying to get this guy on the line maybe for four months. <laughs> I think that's true. Yeah, you've been, you've been so busy. And then uh, just today, I sent him a text and he said, you know what, I have a little bit of time, but I'm glad that we, uh, we weren't able to do a call before because this is a very important time to be talking about the new, the new market that's, Correct. that's coming out of all of this. So I described your, your business as a Wall Street backed real estate investing company. How do you describe Second Avenue? Uh, Second Avenue is, is a, a third party service provider that allows institutional capital to enter into the single family investment space. Um, fully vertically integrated platform, uh, acquisition, property management, construction, uh, and disposition, certainly. Perfect, man. Perfect. And you've been investing in real estate for, for quite a while, just high level. Give us kind of your background, where you started and how you, how you got to kind of sit on this, this, uh, this little throne over there. Uh, so yeah, my background, I started as a single family kind of fix and flip, buy and hold guy back in 2003 and uh, enjoyed the ride of the bubble through 2006. Um, and then uh, 2006, uh, you know, was, was running hard like everybody else and, um, and got held with, you know, got, got kind of stuck with a bunch of stuff and the bottom fell out 2007 and 8. So I uh, learned a lot of lessons there. In 2012, I joined a, a company that became uh, Invitation Homes. Um, so we bought uh, 40 some thousand houses in 18 months of that 40. I bought about 13,000 of those uh, in Florida and, and um, you know, kind of soup to nuts, manage the, the whole process from, from acquisition all the way through um, stabilizing the portfolio for rental. Um, hopefully many of you would know who Invitation Homes is at this point, right? Largest single family operator. And uh, so, yeah, that's kind of how I, I entered from um, into uh, it was my first job I'd ever had. So I kind of transitioned from uh, an, a principal operator uh, into the institutional world. And um, so, you know, kind of, uh, kind of did a couple things since then that were, that were relatively uh, big in scale and then joined the Second Avenue team um, uh, as a founder, uh, part, partnered with a couple of high net worth individuals that... Uh, we started this platform uh, a little over two and a half years ago now. That's awesome. It's, it's nice. It's for so many people on the line now uh, that are fix and flip investors or want to be a fix and flip investor. He started right where you were and bought 13,000 properties. And uh, would you consider yourself, uh, your company, an iBuyer? Not really. Um, actually, you know, I mean, all the iBuyers are shut down as of today, right? But um, I would say that the only overlap is that we will certainly buy houses directly from, you know, a traditional seller, a consumer seller, just like, you know, most of your investors would. Um, that's really the only similarity. Uh, we're not disposing. Um, we're not uh, making an offer based on a commission uh, arbitrage. Uh, we're, but, but we're buying directly from consumers where we can. Great, great. And when I sent you a message this morning, I said, hey, are you still buying? And you want to just respond with your response there? 
Yeah, I mean, absolutely, we're still buying. Um, the, the reason is, and I think there's a couple of smart companies out there that are still buying. Um, and, and I think that you, it's kind of a falling knife right now, right? You have to be careful. Um, but with everybody else stopping, um, at the end of the day, we're providing solutions, right, for sellers. And uh, if we all walked away and stopped buying, <clears throat> look at the ga gaping hole that, that sits in the marketplace, right? Which is just gonna drive values further down. So uh, my hope is that the other companies will, will, will kind of pause for a minute and then, then get us back into the competitive market that we've been in because it's good for our economy. Um, and it's good for homeowners, it's good for sellers and, and, um, <clears throat> and buyers as well. I mean, I know buyers will probably disagree at some degree on the retail side, but it's too competitive and frustrating, but uh, it, it's really driven our economy um, back to, to the, the state that it's been in for many years now. And, um, you know, we're definitely headed to recession. I don't think we can argue that at this point, uh, but the sooner the, the cash flows back into the real estate market, the faster we'll stabilize as an economy, in my opinion. And, and just to carte blanche, stop buying just doesn't feel right. Uh, we're just going to be more selective with how we buy. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's a little disheartening that everybody's kind of just stopped based on the emotion of what's going on. But at the same time, the capital markets are reacting and, and anybody who's tied to Wall Street um, is definitely going to have a challenge um, continuing to buy in large volume. Uh, so are the lenders going to have a challenge. Uh, met with a lot of the, the kind of private lenders in the space, Corvest and um, some of the others, that uh, there's going to be some danger around, um, at least in the short term, but potentially for a while, around their ability to lend in the short term space. So it creates a lot of opportunity in a vacuum for people that are smart. Uh, and I've always said that, you know, being a speedboat is much better than being an aircraft carrier in this space. And so for, for most of the investors that are kind of uh, in your world, I feel like this is a huge opportunity, right? It gets the major competition out of the way, but I would encourage, you know, be careful, but, but get back in the market. Yeah. Have you lowered your, uh, your offers? Did you drop, did you change some algorithms in the back end to say, hey, now we're offering just a little bit less to kind of hedge? So, so not today. Um, because, you know, but we're watching on an hourly basis, right? Um, I feel like what we're probably going to do is just end up cherry picking a little bit more for a while. So we won't, we won't necessarily drop, uh, what our cap rate thresholds are or what our uh, value thresholds are. Um, but we feel like the opportunities will be much larger. So we'll, we'll still keep our buying pace the same, but we'll just be more, more you know, we'll have more opportunities. Therefore we can be more picky. Yeah. Yeah. Are there any certain markets that you've decided to get out of? No, no, we're not doing that at all. Um, we've chosen the markets that we're in for a reason. And we feel like those economies are just going to be, uh, continue to be stable. And, you know, we, we, we're buying in places where we feel like there's stability anyway, the growth. So, I mean, certainly Florida is a prime example, right? Baby boomers aren't going to stop retiring just because the economy slowed down. Yeah. Well, actually Florida is kind of one of those markets that's very heavily, uh, dependent on tourism and uh you know i could see a lot of job loss out in the florida in the florida market do you believe this will um provide more motivated sellers or uh, more opportunities to, to purchase certainly certainly will yeah and, and that's that's one of the benefits of buying uh to, to do doing buy and hold right is is you're not uh, you're not the reason the i buyers can't buy right now is because that falling knife could drop prices on them. If, pr if prices drop on an i buyer at five percent, um, they're out of business, right? I mean, they're already having a hard enough time right now keeping uh, cash flows making sense and, and profitability making sense. Uh, but for us, we'll just ride it out, right? We'll buy a good deal as long as rents don't don't um, compress, which I don't feel like they will. They haven't historically in, in recession. Um, we're going to be just fine. Great. So you're out there, you're open for business. If, if deals come across your desk, you have the ability to purchase them. Yeah. We probably put 15 under contract today. Put uh, six, six under contract just today. F 15, probably about 15, 15 just 15 in the past few hours. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, on average kind of uh, before all this, how many properties a month were you, uh, were you making offers on and then purchasing? Offers. Offers is a tough one because we don't make an offer unless we're pretty confident we're going to get a deal. We, we convert about 80% of our offers. Um, so um, because the reason I'm hesitating is we, we do buy quite a bit of portfolio, do quite a bit of portfolio buying. Um, so if, if you take kind of the portfolios out of the equation, I'd say it's not a huge number. It's probably 75 a month. 
60 to 75 a month. Uh, then when you add the portfolios in, we can have months where we buy four or 500 and then months where we, you know, buy down to that like 75 to a hundred, just depends on what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. So talk a little bit about the private lenders. You said, Hey, we talked to some private lenders that are tied to wall street and they're not able to execute. Yeah. I think, I think some of the, the large lenders that provide warehouse lines to, to, um, to the short term guys are, are really uh, hesitant and they're, they're being very careful on how aggressive um, they're going to allow people to be while they figure out what happens to values. I think that's the biggest thing, right? And we've already seen, I don't know if you guys have seen, but we've seen that the, um, the mortgage rate, interest, the mortgage interest rates have jumped today. It's like significantly jumped today. Um, we're at historic lows or close to it um, for, for the past few months. And, and they just took a big jump because of their, you know, there's volatility, there's risk in the marketplace now. So the mortgage rates went up today. They did, yep. Have, which makes house affordability a little tougher. Correct. Which plays a role in, in how much you can sell your properties for. Mm -hmm. So as someone yep. such as yourself or a real estate investor, as those mortgage rates are going up, that plays a big role in your thinking, doesn't it? It does, it does. But I think we just got to watch it, right? I mean, every day we've got to be paying attention to what's going on in the world around us and, and um, in our micro markets and also from a macro perspective um, because rates, at, you know, look, rates are still in the threes, right? I mean, it's still abysmally low. So I don't think that crushes affordability by any stretch, but if they, if the, if the mortgage market reacts uh, to an ongoing challenge from, from Corona, um, we're going to have to pay really close attention to that. So does this feel a little bit more like, you know, 2008, 2009 to you or more, kind of like after 9-11, the little blip we had there? I think it feels more like after 9-11, uh, hopefully at this rate, right? I mean, we don't know what capital is going to do. So we got to pay attention to capital, right? I thought my feeling has been that the hedge we've had from market correction has been because of the amount of institutional capital flooding the SFR market. And now we don't know what that's going to look like. The, the earliest reports from we, we've gotten from clients and, and other people that we have talked to on real estate or uh, on Wall Street is that everybody's still very bullish on SFR. So as long as that stays in place and money keeps pushing into the space, I think the eye buyers have to back off because they can't catch a falling knife. Um, but, but for the guys that are buying for, to, to rent, I, I don't feel like uh, at this point we have a lot of concerns around capital. So hopefully we can keep the market stabilized and, and you know, kind of keep the acquisition pace going. So really what I'm hearing you is there's a lot of great buying opportunities that are coming out of this. It's kind of like these, these eye buyers were these, were these big trees, right? In the forest, like taking up all the light, they've fallen over, they've moved for a little bit. Now there's some light shining through and someone who was on the sidelines who just couldn't quite get in the game. Now seems like the time to really get in there. Cause this is, this is when you're starting here and you can start kind of ride this thing up. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it depends on, on if you were competing, right? The eye buyers are in so many markets. So it depends on if you're competing directly like we do here in Florida with, with the eye buyers. Um, you know, and, and, there, and if, you're, if your investment strategy is, is overlapping with theirs at all, right? Because they don't buy a lot of distress anyway, because they don't put a lot of money into the houses they buy. Um, so, you know, it, it, but it definitely should, it should clear some, some sunlight uh, to some degree for sure. Um, and what it may, what would probably also do is slow down any kind of speculators, you know, kind of takes the fear, the fear factor and all the speculators will run out. So, I mean, times like this are when the pros win, right? I mean, we know that. That's, that's exactly what happened in 2009-10. Um, you know, the, those of us that kind of knew how to handle it and knew how to be pros in the space, like we flourished. I had some of my best years in 2009-2010. Um, and then others, you know, went out of business. They got out of the way. And we're going to see some of that. I mean, it's crazy. It's kind of happened in, what, two weeks? Um, yeah, instantly. Way, way faster than it did in, in, the, in the mortgage crisis, right? Um, so we'll see. I mean, it's super interesting times, but uh, I'd, I'd pay really close attention to what the capital markets are doing and what your local market, you know, talk to all the agents and find out what buyers are doing. The mortgage market is just huge for this, right? If mortgage, if, if, if all these properties are under contract to sell from a retail perspective right now, um, start having trouble on the lending side, I'd, I'd, be, I'd pay very close attention to that. And, and uh, the only people who are going to know that locally are going to be your local mortgage guys, your local banks. Um, local real estate agents. Yeah, yeah. So, so basically, watching those properties that go from pending to available again. Mm -hmm. 
that's going to be a real big indicator on what's going on with the mortgage space. And, you know, for, uh, for those of you who are on the line who use our uh, pre MLS software, also known as PIN, you can see all the people who are purchasing in your market. You can see all the cash buyers. So you can see who these pros are that are coming in right now and they're buying right now. You can see flips happening right now. So those are the people that have been waiting for something like this to happen or just understood something like this would come and have positioned their companies in a way to, to thrive through these times. And those are great people to wholesale properties to, to align yourself with. So you can uh, kind of jump on their coattails and then stand up and start riding the, uh, uh, the wave here. Now, one question I wanted to ask you, uh, with the banks right now holding back foreclosures, what does that mean? Um, what does that mean to you? I mean, I think it's really short term. You know, I, I, I mean, if obviously it was prolonged for six months, then we know we have a backlog, right? We're creating shadow inventory again, and then we're going to get flooded, which is going to drive pricing down the market, right? Because um, we're going to have, we'll have our supply for distress, um, or at least more supply than we've had for quite a while now. Um, I think it's, you know, and, and everything I'm saying should be taken with a grain of salt because yes. it's, oh, this is very early on, right? We're, we're, we, we all have um, our experience for what happened in, in 2007 and 8 um, and, and, you know, kind of triggers a lot of those emotions and a lot of those experiences we all went through. Um, but look, if we got a cure for Corona tomorrow, we, we, we're only talking about, you know, three, four, five, six months of recession and we're going to be okay. And it's going to kind of go through like we talked about after 9-11. But, but if you look at, at the, the economic indicators in the real estate business from 9-11 to what's happened in the past two weeks, um, and I, I probably should show you this chart that I saw. Um, it's actually um, significantly more challenging for the, for the mortgage and real estate market in the past two weeks than what, what happened after 9-11. Um, like almost double the amount of, of change in the market to what happened in, uh, after 9-11. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And you know, we've had some, some fantastic people on the line here where we've talked about the market predictions and the upcoming crash. If you look at the Exactly How uh, podcast there, you'll find that. And everyone was, was saying things are gonna start softening, right? We have 12 months, 18 months, um, and, you know, my response to them, Corey, was what's cool about uh, any sort of a job recession is people can pick up a job in the gig economy. They can start driving for Uber. They can do these different things. But with those different, um, those different markets suffering right now, that's not really an option for people. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a really interesting time. And inside our software, you mentioned shadow inventory. You can see all the shadow inventory there, which essentially is just a wave of properties, potential notes that you can purchase um, in the future. I know you like to buy a lot of properties at once, but it sounds like the banks are going to be the motivated sellers again. Could be. Could be. Yeah. Well, is, is there anything else that you've, you've seen as, as you've researched this that you think can be of value to the viewers on the line here? Um, I think just, just pay really close attention again. I mean, there's, there's a lot of reports out there right now. I read, you know, kind of all the big investment banks are coming out with, hey, you know, this is what we see is going to happen. And of course, they're motivated to, to downplay some of the potential effects. Um, but, uh, you know, there's a couple of reports out from like Goldman Sachs and, and JP Morgan. I would just engulf myself in, in some of that stuff and gross myself in some of that stuff and try to get as much information as you can on a daily basis. And, and certainly, you know, the Wall Street Journal and New York Times articles like that um, to kind of give you an idea of what's happening in the financial world because it's directly going to affect everything that goes on after that. Yeah, yeah, we are all connected around the globe. Yep. And there's uh, nothing like this has ever happened before to where, you know, the whole world is going through the same thing at the same time with the speed of information that we have, right? To be able to see things in real time, everyone be so connected. This is, this is, this is uncharted territory. And yes. when there's volatility in the market, there's, there's definitely opportunity. So the things that are telling you to, to run and hide, get rid of those and figure it out and jump in. Um, mm -hmm. I do want to ask you a question about how you're, how you're currently operating. So I see, I see you at your office. How are you operating during these, you know, during, during these lockdowns? Are you able to do everything virtual? Oh, yeah. I'm not in my office. I'm sitting in my home office. Um, oh, okay. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. No, all our offices are closed physically. Um, everything's virtual. Uh, definitely using a lot of, of Zoom. Um, and we use, we use Microsoft. Uh, we're Microsoft Shops. So we've got Microsoft Teams. Uh, it's very similar to Zoom. Um, so we use both of those externally. We use Zoom and internally we use Teams. And, and it's literally back to back to back all day long with video chat. Yeah. No, the internet 
as a whole is slowing down right now. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, sure. it's, it's really interesting. No, but as far as operating virtually, like mm-hmm. actually at buying properties, you said you made six yeah. offers. How are you able to, to do your due diligence virtually? Sure. Um, so one, and again, it's brand new, right? Where it's so early. So, um, you know, we're definitely working with consumers to the extent we're buying off market properties to, to do video walkthroughs, whether it's with Google duo or, um, or, uh, FaceTime, um, or zoom, or, you know, just whatever we feel like we can get the seller comfortable with. Um, that's what we've, that was, that's what we've implemented with our buying teams. Um, and then there's, there's some cameras out there that you can use that are pretty simple, simple, um, to, to have people kind of, you know, the, the biggest thing that we've done when we have to go to a house is, is, is provide kind of a questionnaire for the seller or for, of course, we're in the, we're in the management business, right? So we do a lot of, a lot of touches with residents, um, making sure, you know, that, that they've signed off, like they haven't felt sick. They definitely don't have the coronavirus, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and then when we go in, we're, you know, obviously maintaining social distancing, um, and so from an underwriting perspective, obviously inspections are a much more challenging thing to do right now. Um, so we've started using um, some camera technology uh, and using Matterport um, and uh, some, some cheaper cameras than the kind of traditional Matterport cameras that still integrate with our technology. And then we can, we can underwrite a whole house. If, we, if it takes about an hour and a half to two hours to kind of do a full um, video walkthrough, but but the, the camera technology is so good, we can actually do a full underwrite most of the time from doing that and kind of try to do it virtually. It's still some touch. I mean, you, you know, I don't feel like you can get very accurate completely virtually uh, for us, right? Because we're holding these properties for five to 10 years. So we have to be very careful that we're being very specific with what our CapEx, you know, rehab numbers are going to be. So if we're not, you know, obviously that'll kill us. Um, so uh, it's a little different than if we were calling it, whole, you know, virtual wholesaling or if we were, um, you know, doing a fix and flip kind of a deal. Um, but uh, that's what we've done so far and certainly asked lots and lots of questions. We're, we're building out our landing pages to be more detailed and, and allow sellers to upload video, um, which we haven't done historically. It's been pictures. Um, and then um, just a lot of email messaging, a lot of text messaging that says, hey, you know, we're still buying and, here, you know, we're here to support you. There's, you know, here's the steps we're taking, you know, um, especially to our residents, of course, but, but even on the buying side. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, it's funny. I can't even tell you how many people reached back out to me that had rejected my offer um, mm-hmm. a handful of weeks ago. Yep. And they're like, well, we might consider it. I'm like, my offer just went down. And it's yep. going to go down tomorrow and it's going to go down the next day. Yep. And this is uh, this is a great time because so many homeowners, you know, all the, uh, they had all the leverage in the negotiation. Mm-hmm. Uh, even capital was just dime a dozen. Mm-hmm. It was, uh, which is why companies like you know ours at CIX or PrivateLenders.com existed because money is worthless now. It's it was the buyer, but these these different uh, you know market forces could kind of change the balance there. And now when you're out there negotiating, you know you can take that zestimate and say, listen, that zestimate does not take into consideration the coronavirus. So I know you think your house is worth that much, but if you want to sell it right now, this is how much it's it's worth and. You know, in our software, you can see how much people owe, the liens, the judgments, and stuff like that. So before you even talk to them, you can uh, you know if they can even take an offer that would be, uh, you know, somewhere in the ballpark for what you would need as an investor to uh, to, to make the numbers work in these in these times. But um, you know, Corey, just I see behind you have it says, uh, "Stay hungry, stay humble." Is that your uh, is that is that your mantra? Uh, I don't know if it's a mantra, but it's definitely something that I, uh, definitely a statement I have a lot of respect for that I try to keep in mind, top of mind at all times. Yeah. Well, I don't, um, thanks again for jumping on the line here. I mean, it's, it's just great to see someone who's like, Hey, we have plenty of money. We're going all in and, uh, we're going to keep on pushing and we're just going to watch it every day. People talk about cracking the code all the time. Cracking the code is just watching and looking at it and adjusting every day. That's how you crack the code. Exactly right. Exactly right. It's not rocket science. It's just, it's just looking at what's in front of you. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a lot of people now that are, um, that are getting laid off from their jobs in one way or another. Maybe they're getting big pay cuts. The stores are just closing. They're at home. Wouldn't you say right now is a good time really to just dive in and learn something? <clears throat> That's our feeling. Yeah, for sure. Um, definitely our feeling, you know, that, uh, 
folks that we've got, if you've got opportunity, you know, don't be stagnant. Don't sit at home and, and you know, play video games. Like I guess a lot of, a lot of guys doing, you know, especially, but learn, grow, develop, right. That, that's the, that's the differentiating factor for those of us that, that find success, especially financial success is we don't slow down in times like this. We don't take a vacation. You know, I'm, I'm still up at 5 a.m. I'm still busting it every day, seven to seven every day and, and uh, filling every hour of time that I can. And when I get a, fa a, a spare minute, I literally open up Audible and, and you know, listen to another book or, um, you know, it, it's, it's growth time. You know, now's the time when, when all the work you put in for so many years is, shows, shows itself. And um, start now. If you haven't put in the work, definitely start now. Yeah. Yeah. And if you have an existing, existing model, this is the time to retool because your, your competitors, they're not going to retool. A lot of people yeah. are going to fall off. People that are just yeah. getting in right now, huge advantage to be able to start playing with this and uh, this be the new norm. And for those yeah. of you who think you know everything, well, guess what? You don't. Yeah. <laughs> and this is, you know, Corey, man, there's so, so many people I talk to about real estate. I talk to people who are brand new to real estate and their big excuse is, well, I don't have the time or I don't have the money. I'm like, okay. Mm -hmm whatever. And then people that have been in real estate that are thinking about getting back in, they've been like, well, I'm going to wait for the, the recession to come. Mm -hmm. So many, you know, smart people who've made fortune in the real estate before have been yeah. saying that. So now it's time to get off the fence. I mean, yeah. you got a few weeks, let's get this thing figured out together. Agreed. Agreed. And you know, I, I think, um, you know, it, it's always like, it always has been. It's, it's about being creative and finding a way to get deals funded. Right. And, um, and I think, you know, there's a couple lenders out there that are going to still be able to fund and, and do it in a big way. And, and money's going to be tighter, right? So it's the opportunity to get back, dust off all that creative financing education from years gone by and, uh, and start paying attention to that stuff. There's a lot of good loans out there subject to buying deals subject to and adding to your own portfolio is going to be a real thing again, right? And, I think that's uh, how you and I talked about that because that's how I made my first million in real estate was, yeah. was subject to. Yeah, same here. Started with zero, no dollars, right? No dollars, just a lot of drive and desire for education and learn. And um, yeah, so I think that all that old stuff, all that old teaching that we, we all started with in our careers, um, time to dust off all those old techniques and, and be ready. Yeah, yeah, you bet. And you guys, you know, there's the most important thing is to always just think about what you can control. You can't control the market, but you can control your reactions. You can control doing your best. So just, you know, as you're looking at this, think, what can I control right now? And just focus all your energy on that because there's so many things that are just, uh, that are just out of your, your ability to influence. And you got to keep your headspace clear for what matters the most. Um, Corey, I'll let you get back to it, man. Like, like you said, you're, uh, you know, 12 hours a day, no matter what. So thanks for spending these, uh, you know, 30 some minutes with us here. And I look forward to, uh, to connecting with you in the future. Yeah, sounds great. Thanks, man. The Connected Investors app connects you with investors, notifies you of available properties, helps locate cash buyers, and secure private funding to close deals. Set up in seconds to become a member of the Connected Investors social network. Now you can scroll through your main feed to find cash buyers, see investment properties not available to the general public, and network with investors by adding your own comments to a thread to keep the conversation going. The Control Center is your connection to add properties to sell, start new discussions, connect with local investors, and even find private funding. The Notifications tab will keep you alerted to new investment properties and offers. You'll also find new friend requests to connect directly with the community to build your network. From the Property Marketplace, you'll be able to find, favor, and make offers on investment properties. Download Connected Investors today to find, figure, fund, and flip investment properties on the go.